Greetings and welcome to another episode of Pinball Stories. Mike here. And this series I talk about the stories behind the machines of how you pick them up and the provenance and other interesting little tidbits. And uh, this is just a, an impromptu story that I'm doing right now um, regarding this particular game and how I ended up picking it up, which was yesterday. Um, and, you know, I'm sure other people have these kind of stories, but this is a situation where Somebody called, this is a buddy of mine that said he knew somebody who had two pinball machines in his garage. He said, um, you know, I, I want to get one to work on and then you can have the other one. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, what game is it? What games are they? And he says, I don't know. I'm like, okay. You know, but they'll be real cheap or whatever. So, you know, let's go take a look at them. Let me know. We had to like do this caravan with two cars, right? And I know people are looking at this going, all right, what is that? Because that does not look like an original pinball uh, cabinet painting, right? So I will reveal what this game is in just a minute. But I'll tell you the story about how we came to it. So um, these days I'm not really super aggressively getting games, but I can't resist, you know, an opportunity for for a, 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 a you know a, a mystery game like this. Because you never know what it's going to be. Is it going to be a good game? Is it going to be a crappy game? And I didn't really care if it was a crappy game. I'd I'd uh, I'd do something with it, you know. I'd hand it off to somebody else who, who wants a, a, good, a good game or something, whatever. Or, you know, a game to, to practice on or learn or be their first pinball. So anyway, um, this place was about 45 minutes away. So we, we hop in our little car caravan and we head, we head down there to the burbs and a little bit off the beaten path. And we're out there and um, we pull into this neighborhood and up goes the garage door and you can see the machines in there. So it turns out the, the these were owned by a guy who used to be an engineer at one of the local TV stations. So he kind of knew a lot about tinkering and stuff like that. And um, he was, a, I guess he was a camera engineer and worked on all that kind of stuff. But he tinkered with all kinds of other things. And this is a good example of, of where you go, you know, sometimes um, going to pick up these machines, you meet the most interesting people. And this was an example. This guy... It's probably in his 70s. He'd been retired for quite a while, and uh, he he needed to clear stuff out. He was too old and and to move these games around. So my friend knew him. We came out there. We were basically doing him a service, getting the games out of the garage. Um, and uh, I didn't know what the games were. My friend Lewis found out what one of the games was, and he was like. I really want that game. I've been looking for that game for a while, so I'll take that one, you know, and then you can have the other one. And I'm like, well, what's the other one? And he's like, I don't know. I said, okay, well, I'll go down there, you know, because you never know if the other one is going to be better or worse than the other game. So I'm cool with that. So the game that he heard was down there was a Gottlieb sing-along, which is, I guess, a 60s era game. Really nice, you know, that's a nice game. It's pretty well regarded. So I thought, well... If it's going to be another game from that era, I don't know what it could be, you know. I was, I don't know, I don't know what, but anyway, we get there, we pull the thing up, and I see this cabinet, and I'm like, oh, okay, this thing has already been played with, and there's the head right there, and it's been repainted too, so the whole cabinet has been repainted, and uh, somebody's put... Uh, power button. And I don't think these games had power buttons. I think they were uh, they were plugged in in that those early era when some of them didn't have power buttons. Or if it did, I don't know. There's no spot for it. I think that bottom is original. Okay, so um, let's look at the game, shall we? Shall so here's the game, the other game, the one that I picked up. Check it out. Is that cool? That is a, uh, a Gottlieb high score. What's interesting about this machine is it's, and I got the, I'm sorry that the cabinet is turned sideways. Let me turn the light on here. But this is a, this is, this is a notable game because it's a pinball themed pinball machine. Isn't that neat? There's people playing pinball on the back glass. Um, it's got a, it's got an interesting, uh, feature. I, I've, I've not, I don't, I've seen pictures of this game before, but I don't know if I've ever really even played it or seen one in person. So I'm kind of psyched. So 
this is also kind of a first look because I just unloaded it out of my car and threw it in here. I haven't had a chance to do anything with it. But the back glass is in pretty good shape. There's some there's some flaking and some repair in certain spots, but it does look pretty good. So I'm going to pull that out and triple thick the, the back glass. Um, I don't know if I can turn this thing around because I've got this game up on some things here. But let's see if I can, if it's, I might not be able to do this or this could be a disaster. I'm trying it around to give you a little view of it. Let's see. Okay. I can get a little bit of a view. So here is the game. You can see it has, it has an interesting, uh, kind of little roulette wheel at the bottom of it, and the game is kind of upside down. It's got four flippers on each side. Very unusual playfield layout with pop bumpers and stuff like that. Um, so it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play. I have no idea what condition it's in. Of course, like any time these things uh, are like this, it's like, oh, it worked when I put it up, you know, so we don't know. So obviously the cabinet has been repainted and and all that, but uh, it was pretty inexpensive. i got to get that ball out. See, there's a ball just sitting there hovering. So I'll uh, I'll take a look at this. So that's that's the game that I picked up. Now here's what's interesting about this. It's always fun to, you know, to... Um, just, you know, meet the interesting characters, right? So we go to go in the guy's house to see the games, and he says, uh, now look, uh, I, got a, I got a dog in here. You guys got to be really careful. It's an ex-police dog. And I'm like, I love dogs, you know? What kind of dog is it? Is it a German Shepherd? Is it, you know, this? He says, oh, it's a Malamute. It's a, you know, and if you don't know the proper commands in, the, in its native language, it can be very dangerous. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, uh, uh, should, does that mean we shouldn't go in? He's like, no, 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 no. Just let me let me make sure the dog is in a good mood. And he he kind of opens the door and goes in. He's like, right, back, stay, sit. And then he opens the door. All right, y'all, come in quick, come in quick. And I come in, and it's a little tiny dog. <laughs> it was a little tiny dog, um, a little one of those little furball puffy dogs. It was super duper cute. It was the sweetest dog ever. And, he, and uh, so we were like, okay, <laughs> this guy's an interesting character. So. Um, another interesting thing about this guy was that he was an engineer of a, a TV station, but one of his obsessions was traffic lights and traffic signals. So he takes us outside, and his whole backyard is filled with vintage traffic signals from like the 1940s onward. And I'm not just talking about stoplights. I'm talking about the control panels and the systems and the, the, uh, the big metal cabinets. Apparently at one time he had these lights hooked up all around his house and they were set up so that they would, you know, change to like street lights, you know, stop lights, yellow, red, and, and he had blinking lights and um, it must have been quite a scene in the neighborhood. This guy's collection of traffic light and traffic controllers. Um, so that's kind of neat. You just never know who you're going to run into. And uh, this was a fun little pickup. And so, you know, kind of like a, uh, never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's really crappy. Sometimes it's pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this game. This looks like it would be a really fun game to get playing. And so I am definitely going to be doing future videos on taking this high score and turning it into restoring it and getting it all working. It's in, it's in, I think it's in pretty good shape. It doesn't bother me about the cabinet because I'm one of these people that, that doesn't really care about the cosmetics. It's all to me about the gameplay. And so we'll get this game back working and I will keep the cabinet like that. It doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of charming and interesting in its own way. And uh, until next time, thank you guys for watching and listening and putting up with my interesting stories. And uh, visit pinballhelp.com and I'll see you then.